Also in today's speech, Joe Biden tried a 180 as it relates to funding of the police. I know we expect so much from our law enforcement officers, so we need to support them. That's why my crime plan to help communities recruit, hire, and train nationwide more than 100,000 additional officers, accountable officers for community policing. <laughs> Folks, when it comes to fighting crime, we know it works. Yeah, we know it works. Joining us now is former acting Department of Homeland Security Secretary Chad Wolf. Uh, Chad, uh, the lip service, hey, that's real nice, but uh, wouldn't this be more effective if he also called out the district attorneys that are going soft on crime and criminals in their own local localities? Well, absolutely. Not only the district attorneys, but it would have been nice in 2020 while President Biden was on the campaign trail to actually talk about the violence uh, and the defund the police movement that we saw during the civil unrest in, in the summer of 2020, but we absolutely silent on that front as well. And again, this is an administration and a president that continues to talk about. There's actually language in an executive order that they have put out this year that talks about how the criminal justice system and police officers are systemic racist. Um, and so the list goes on and on. Look, you have Border Patrol officers who are, who are sworn law enforcement officers that they will attack for doing their jobs on horseback. Um, so I think that the facts are out there that this administration, I think it's politically convenient, right? He's now talking about supporting law enforcement when you're a couple of months out from a, a midterms election. But I think if you look at the facts and you look at the data time and time again, when they should be supporting law enforcement, they actually uh, do the opposite and, and they're not supporting it. Uh, with any resources and certainly not with any leadership. Yeah, I, my, my guess is that they did out, went out and did some fresh polling, did some focus groups and realized they were upside down on crime, surprise, surprise, uh, and decided to change their story. Uh, and is there a total disconnect, I think, between oh, having totally open borders and then suddenly going to Pennsylvania saying, hey, we're going to be on tough on crime. Listen to the president today. He spoke about his interaction with the people in Mexico. You know what, the Mexicans are, Mexico, which has real problems causing us real problems, you know what their biggest complaint is? Can't we stop the gun, gun, gun trafficking across the southern border into Mexico? Have you heard that before? I mean, that, that's his big concern, well, is that there are too many weapons flowing from the north to the south? Well, to be, to be honest, I'm not really concerned about what Mexicans think. I'm concerned about what Americans think, and I'm concerned about putting Americans first. And this administration, time and time again, refuses to acknowledge that there is a border crisis of their own making. The president refuses to go to the border. The vice president refuses to go to the border. They refuse to listen to law enforcement officers. You have the chief of the Border Patrol on record in the last day or so saying that the, the cause of this crisis is because there are no consequences to illegal behavior. And this is a system that they have set up and designed. They do not apologize for it, and they actually brag about it. And so for the president to sit there and talk about what Mexicans are thinking and feeling, he should, he should really stop and think about that and say, I'm actually president of the United States, and maybe I should be putting together policies and thinking about what's best for Americans. Uh, th I, this gets me hot and bothered at the end of the day because he's not doing his job. This administration refuses to enforce uh, w laws on the border, and it's causing a, an unmitigated disaster when you have over 100,000 overdose deaths because of fentanyl. Uh, Ninety percent of that comes across that southern border. So if he wants to protect Americans, he wants to be on the side of law enforcement, it's time to do your job along that border and solve the crisis that we have today. Yeah, and maybe Joe could actually go down to the border the first time in his 50-plus years in his pub in public service. And I'm glad he's going to Pennsylvania twice in one week. But why not try going to Texas, Arizona, uh, New Mexico, or California on the border and talking to actual Border Patrol agents? I think that would do the trick as well. Chad Wolf, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.